Today, I want to talk to you about one of the most important tools a photographer needs to have when they do photography, and that is their camera. I use the Canon R5. Now, you can, if you're a Canon person, a Nikon person, a Fuji person, it doesn't matter. The camera is the most important thing in your toolkit. It's what makes your images. It's what you use to sell at the end of the day. I chose to use the R5 because I've always been a Canon person since the beginning of when I started to do everything. And I didn't want to change systems over. And I'm used to a Canon and I love the Canon system. One of the biggest things that I love about the new mirrorless cameras, specifically the R5, is the focus system. When you're working with dogs and kids, it's always nice to have a great focus system because they move constantly. With the R5, you get you have the opportunity to change your focus so that it captures the eye and it focuses on the eye. And you can even change it from animal to human and back to human or to animal when you're doing those different kinds of sessions. If I have humans and animals in the same photo, I will defer to the animal because that's usually the harder one to capture. So that is one of the biggest things. The megapixels, it's huge megapixels here. But to be honest, I'm not putting stuff on billboards very often, hardly ever. I think I've done two billboards ever in my photography career. Um, and so that is not the most important thing. The other thing I will talk about is the lens. Um, there's a billion different kinds of lenses that you can use out there. My go-to, and it's been my go-to for the last three years, is the one, uh, 24 to 105 f4. The great thing about this when doing family and dog sessions is it's quickly able to zoom in and out and capture a tight shot and a wide shot all in this uh, fraction of a couple of seconds. So yes, fixed lenses are awesome and you can get a shallow depth of field and everything. But when you're working in a studio using lights, you're not shooting usually at F1.2 because lighting is not the issue because you can continue to light your subject with the lighting that you have in a studio. So the nice thing is we shoot at usually around 6.3, 7.1 and then we have the ability to focus in and out on our subjects very quickly so that when they're moving and we're like, oh, they got them in the right spot, we can do a tight shot and a wide shot and within a fraction of a second and basically turns into two different types of photos all in a fraction of a second. So if affordability is the problem, because when you're starting out, buying a camera is probably the most expensive thing in your bag. Um the other option, which is what I'm filming this with right now, is the R6 Mark II. There's an R6 Mark I, like the original, and then the R6 Mark II. And that is another amazing camera. It's our backup camera in case something were to happen to this. And I use it for all my zooms and everything that's connected to a tripod right behind my monitor here. So the R6 has the same kind of focus system as the R5, and there's a lot of very similar things that anybody can get by with doing amazing photos with the R6 if you're on a budget and you're looking for something cheaper. Again, when we bought both our R5 and our R6 Mark II, we bought it with the kit lens. And I say kit lens because sometimes kit lenses can be perceived as like a negative thing excuse me, a negative thing. Our kit lens is the actual, it's a pro style lens. It's the 24 to 105. This lens is also a 24 to 105. We also use a 15 millimeter uh, wide, like a super wide angle lens. It's a fixed uh, uh, 15 millimeter. It's like a little, it's actually right over here. It's really small. So, uh, sorry, it's 16 millimeter, sorry. But this one goes, um, this one we use a lot when we're doing like wide angle, like dogs catching treats or something like that. Or you're looking for like a different perspective or something like kind of crazy and cool. When you put it really close to your subject, it makes them look a little distorted and weird. But that's actually kind of a cool shot for some people. So um, that's, these are probably our two biggest things that we use. I also have a 50 millimeter uh, F 1.2. Don't use it a ton, but I still have it. Um, I know a lot of photographers that kind of the catch thing that they go to is a 70 to 200. When you're doing studio photography, a 70 to 200 is a little too tight. And especially if you don't have a very big studio, it's a little too tight to get the 
the distance and everything that you need to be. If you're doing outdoor photography, it's great. But indoor photography, 24 to 105 is perfect for whatever whatever you need. You can get really, really tight and you can get far away really, really quick. So that is my main tool of the trade. I'll talk about other tools of the trade in other podcasts or in other vlogs. Sorry, I don't know why I call it podcast other vlogs, but I want you to know what we're using and how we're using those tools to create the business that we have. I'm John Glazer, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon.